the Superboat World Championships, presented by Steel. Welcome to Key West for day three. This is the ultimate day when we crown world champions. Three days of racing culminated today, a day when you test your equipment to see if it can take three straight races of not leaving anything on the table. You test yourself, you test your resolve, your ability to deal with the distractions, the challenges to the mind, everything that stands between you and a world championship. Dami Sanders here with Mike Yawoski and a great action all week long, especially yesterday, day number two. Day number two was awesome. And here's a team that really needed redemption, right? This guy could. They didn't finish one race last year here in Key West. They had something to prove coming back to Key West for 2016, Tommy, and they were getting it done. Day one, they had a fantastic day. Day number two started off awesome, but then mechanical gremlins started to creep in. We were unclear what was going on with the Geico boat. We heard some mechanical issues, possibly what's going on, but we got an update from Gary Stray, the crew chief for Miss Geico. I knew about halfway down the first straightaway that we had some intercooler issue we actually measure inlet air temperature. That's the air that enters, it's the last place before it actually enters the engine. And we have a window that we want to stay within before it can cause collateral damage to the engine. What just happened? As they head into turn number one. I imagine what you heard was some popping and banging uh, towards the end of the race. What actually caused this was there was um, salt water um, above some very important sensors um, on the bottom end of the engine, what we call a crank trigger sensor. And that controls the whole ignition system. We're doing a, a, a double engine change. Um, we've got some fantastic guys on the team and, and the guys that you see behind uh, changing the engines here. Um, we should be done by um, early afternoon. We'll do a couple of slow laps the crew will get on the boat and give everything a quick once over, make sure we haven't got any leaks or, or anything left loose. Um, and then by that time, engine oil temperatures, water temperatures should be up to, to running temperatures. And then we'll go and give it uh, three or four good laps out there and, and take a look at the data afterwards. And Tommy, you have to keep salt water off of these engines. Salt water is so corrosive, it's so hard on everything. Electronics, mechanical moving parts, Geico has a lot of work to do. Yeah, double engine change. How about that right there? That is commitment as we look at this incredible playing field, which we will be seeing more of today, as these teams will be going 13 laps instead of 10. And again, we remind you, double points on this day. But what a course. Tommy, one more time around turn number one, the wall. This has got some of the biggest waves in offshore powerboat racing. As we headed to turn number two, this is where the turn's not too bad, but it's when you come out of the turn, you start hitting those holes caused by the drainage pipes, then up this long straightaway. Just a little, little bend around the mole there, and then you head into the harbor turn. Remember all the lines we saw going through this corner? Some teams would square it up, some teams would arc the corner. It just depended on their setup and how they felt. Four and a half miles and 13 laps around it for this unlimited class. Unlimited means anything goes. Just a just a length limit on the hulls right there. That's a look at them right there as they're getting ready to head out, get lined up, and we'll get our racing started, hey, just in a second here. And the yellow flag is up on the pace, but it looks like they might hold them a little bit longer. This is a pretty disjointed start here. Nobody's really lined up where they need to be, and you can see how long the yellow flag is gone. This is the longest, there's the green flag. We are going racing. They couldn't hold it anymore. That is CMS closest to you, Maritimo. Another great start by the Australian team. Remember, a long way to get here. They are definitely getting their act together at Key West, and look at that boat run. I had the chance to climb on that boat. That boat is a technological marvel. There are so many cool things on that boat, but very cool things on this boat also. Number three, CMS, Bob Bull, Randy Sism, getting it done one more time in Key West. CMS3, the points leader coming into this third and final race. Miss Geico in the top three team, CRC, Sunlight Supply. Initially, the battle, you got to be watching those three boats. And some would think that CMS has an advantage, right? Randy Sism is the throttle man of that boat. He is the owner and founder of MTI, Marine Technology Incorporated. He built that boat. He built the MTI. And that would give him an advantage, right? He would know that boat. He would know the setup. There we see Wake Effects. There we see CRC Sunlight Supply. Bad start for them, Tommy. Here comes Envy, and at the very top of your screen, that is Cat Can Do. They got a rough week here in Key West. They didn't actually start yesterday's race, but they did start race day number one. Here is Miss Geico and Maritimo. Believe it or not, Miss Geico is a Maritimo hull. It was built by Maritimo in Australia, and Geico bought it. Whoa! Big hop there by Geico. That boat stood up on its tail, and Tommy, I see damage over there to the side of Geico. See that green flapping? Oh, boy. There is damage done to the Geico boat, and it looked pretty significant. 
Yeah, that's that's got him slowing down big time there. Boy, snake bit. The first day looked so good for this team, and now day two ended up not making it back to the harbor under their own power, and it looks like the same sort of a future for them right now, unless something drastic can be done. Everything looked so good for this team all week. They had the engines, they had the equipment, everything worked well. Let's see what happened. Geico just took an odd hop, but you know, Tommy, that damage started before that boat took off out of the water. I could see the carbon fiber starting to peel off. I could see that flap just a little bit. Let's go on board with the hop here and see what happened. Oh, right there, you can see it peeled the back of that boat off. Wow, look, that's the back corner. That's the transom of the boat coming apart. That boat could be taking on water, Tommy. What people need to understand about water, it's an impenetrable force, right? When water gets into something, it's gonna find the easiest way out it can, right? So when it breaks through, look at the damage there. They are pumping the back of the Geico boat out. The Geico boat would be going right down right now if it weren't for the efforts of the fast response towing team. They do a great job at helping salvage these boats once an accident has happened. Had to do a double engine change in order to get into this race back in the action today. I don't think they're gonna be able to do a hull change no, in the I short period of time. No, I don't think so. It'll be interesting to see what they do, but. The number three boat, CMS, getting it done one more time. They have been perfect, Tommy, except for day one. Remember, they had that run-in with the Geico boat. Geico got penalized, but then also CMS hit the buoy. But they're getting it done. I'm really impressed with this Maritimo team. Maritimo is getting it done out here. There is Wake FX and CRC Sunlight Supply. All of these boats are within striking distance right now, Tommy. I think there could be some spoilers here, maybe, for the World Championship as well. The CMS boat made it look very, very easy. Such a convincing win on day number two. But Things can change in the course of a day. We've seen that time and again throughout this special week in Key West. Maritimo and Wake Effects doing a battle now. Wow, Tommy, Wake Effects is putting themselves in the same position that caused them to miss the buoy yesterday. They got into that rooster tail. They couldn't see what's going on, but they're trying everything they could do to get inside of this Maritimo boat. And a cool fact about Maritimo and CMS, CMS uses a lot of Mercury products, uh, you know, different manufacturers. The Maritimo team builds a lot of their stuff in-house. They do a lot of their own manufacturing. Remember, this is a yacht building company out of Australia. Really great team, but right now, I think they've got to contend with Wake Effects on the inside. Head to head between these two right now, and Wake Effects certainly a dark horse to take the world championship. Sixth place on day number one, but they, they really powered through and got a second place on day number two. That kept them in the game. Jeff and Rusty running pin to pin. They made the pass stick to Maritimo. Oh, what's that big splash there? Problem right there with Maritimo. I think Maritimo, yes, they did spin out. Not sure what happened, Tommy. They had good clean water. They had their own line, uh, but we'll have to wait to see exactly what happened again. They looked okay coming to that corner. I didn't really see anything wrong. I did see a bit of a strange hop there, but uh, nothing that was too alarming. Once again, the SPI medical team has responded very promptly, although the boat's not upside down. You want to make sure there's no injuries, nobody's hurt, uh, and everything is going to be okay. That close to the buoy, and we need to get this sorted out. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. The Superboat Key West World Championship presented by Steel is brought to you by GEICO, WHM Plumbing and Heating Contractors, and by Steel, the number one selling brand of gasoline-powered handheld outdoor power equipment in America. Well, that's the situation right now for the Miss Geico boat. Such high hopes for this World Championships week and such a great start on day number one, actually finishing in first place. It was revised down to second place, but still every hope in the world of getting back on it. Had some trouble yesterday, did a double engine replacement, and then this happens today. Bad wave, just hit a piece of water that did some damage to that hull there and damage that unfortunately is not gonna allow them to race more. Stood it up, tripped it, and it ripped the corner of the boat off. That was it. Just hit a bad wave. And that's not the way you want to end the world. God. At the end of the World Championships for the Miss Geico team, it certainly means, uh, unfortunately, good news for someone else. Gives hopes to some of these other teams out here. Meanwhile, still in the lead, CMS3 just performing as they did on day number two. CMS continues right now, Tommy, to lead, headed out towards turn number one. It's amazing how the sun changes our perspective on things. It's hard to even tell that that's 
the difference between CMS and Wake Effects, but we know that is the three boat of CMS. They're completing that turn. They look good today. They look perfect just about every day. But now they seem to be slowing, yeah, not that sure. That is not their speed right there. That looks completely different right there. Something is going on with that boat. No, big rooster tails come up. And this is a team that's very well mechanically repaired, right? They have lots of spare engines, lots of spare parts. They come fully prepared to Key West. And they do not like mechanical oh, look, wow. failures. Wake effects going by them like they were standing. Still right there. So wake effects taking over the lead right now. Started this day back in the points. Sixth place on day one, second place though on day number two. Boy, have they taken over this race in a big way with just a couple of laps left to go. Well, the rookie, Rusty Rahm, is getting it done, isn't he? He made that move on the outside. You know, this is another rookie driver just like Jake Noble, and Rusty's got a great throttle man in that boat also. Jeff Harris has been around a very long time, multinational and world champion, and a great teacher, right? And obviously, he's able to teach Rusty in a way that Rusty is getting it done. They have now taken over the lead in Super Mode Unlimited. Looking super strong right now, a very substantial lead for Wake Effects in a big turn of events in this unlimited final race of the year. That profile, as we mentioned before, very familiar. That MTI boat there comes from, well, one of the cradles of boat building civilization in this country around the Lake of the Ozarks, just south of St. Louis, Missouri. That's where this and so many other great boats are born. We're here in Lake of the Ozarks, which is kind of our home lake. We're out of St. Louis. It's, you know, 120 miles away, but this is where we do most of our testing. Most of our product development is done here. And Rusty has wake effects here at the lake. So it works out really well because it's a phenomenal place to test. We've got more shoreline than the state of California here, which most people don't realize. So we consider ourselves the high performance boating capital of the world here in good old Missouri. I actually used to uh, work for Randy at Marine Technology uh, for a lot of years. And this is one of the last boats that I built whenever I was there. I actually built this boat. It's probably one of the fastest boats in the world, honestly. I mean, there's, it's within the top 10, I'd imagine. Nice move by Wake Effects, too. This is, again, a great group, three or four boats up here. Well, Wake Effects is a dealership here in the Lucky the Ozarks. We sell MTI power boats, Mastercraft tow boats, and Crest Pontoon boats. You know, we consider ourselves more of a boutique. Um, pride ourselves in not carrying every brand or all types of brands, but really the high end of every type of boat. This whole deal started out as a picture with uh, Wake Effects on the side of the boat. That's, uh, I kind of emailed it to him and he's like, you know, I've, that's really one of my dreams. Can I get in the boat somehow? And he went tested with us, got hooked, decided to purchase the boat and go wide open with a full race team. So uh, that's where we're at now. Key West to me, you know, has always been the Mecca, you know, for years I've been going down for the poker run and was always a uh, spectator with dreams of one day being out there. So to actually be out there racing, you know, it was really surreal. Last year was his first season for racing. I mean, he took home national championship, triple crown, rookie of the year. I mean, that's insane. That was a, a first for a rookie in that, in that class. I mean, we're not starting in the little outboard class or even the, the 750 class. These guys are in with the big boys with, you know, 1650s, and some of the guys are probably close to 2,000 horsepower. And to run at that level, is amazing first off and, and for those guys to come in and, and just go to the top tier and, and pull it off is, I mean, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. I mean, they, my hat's off to them. The fruits of their labors back on the Lake of the Ozarks on full display here, final day of racing, the unlimited class here at the Superboat World Championships in Key West. Wake effects with a substantial, a strong, maybe an insurmountable lead as they round into the final stretch. And Tommy, one thing to talk about, Rusty Rahm has bought this boat from CMS and from Bob Bull and will be campaigning this next year as his own boat. This year it was a deal he worked out with Bob Bull where he leased the boat, raced it with Jeff Harris. Next year, look for this boat to look completely different and be under the Wake Effects name. Hats off to Rusty though, he's done a great job once again. Uh, he's been consistent, they've been where they've needed to be in order to take advantage of others' misfortune. One of the greatest rookie campaigns of all time, US won and now the world champions as they pass by the checkered flag. Wake Effects for Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, first place to take the world championship. Great day for that team as we see CRC Sunlight Supply. They are now in second place. Mike DeVries, Gary Blue, hats off to this team. They don't have a lot of time in this boat. They also came out and ran a great race. Remember, they battled with Geico in that epic battle yesterday. And then the 50-foot mystic of Chris Cox and Herb Stotler. Great job for this team. Once again, a team that doesn't race a whole bunch. They're on a brand new power package right now, just trying to get the boat figured out. 
52 Envy, a rough start to their week, but what a great way to finish. An opposite story here, CMS 3 with an overwhelming victory in day number two. Poised to take the world championship with a great start the day it all came unraveled in the final moments of this third day race. And there are your champions. Wake effects, what a performance throughout the season. What a performance here in Key West on top. But it all wraps up. CRC, Sunlight Supply coming in with second place. CMS3, a disappointing third and an encouraging fourth place for number 52 Envy, the Wake FX team. Full celebration mode right now, including the throttle man, Jeff Harris. We had a really bad start. Um, we got hosed down from kind of both sides. And uh, we popped out and kind of took what we had. But when we got to the first turn, we were running like, I think, fourth maybe. By the time we went a couple of turns, we were running uh, third. So we ran down Maritino, finally passed Maritimo. And uh, hey, next thing you know, we were in the lead. So good run. Boat was flawless. Mercury power could not have been any better. And uh, hey, I got a heck of a throttle, man. That's all I can <laughs> yeah. say. Yeah. We've had a good day, man. Awesome. Way to go. Oh. Rusty Rom, Jeff Harris, the overwhelming choices for, at least in the unlimited class, the Rookies of the Year. And of course, will be a team in their own right to start 2017. When we come back, a multi-year battle, a rivalry between these two teams, AMH Construction and Cooper Standard, the Superboat Extreme Race takes place. The Party People! Party People! Coming down to Key West Bow Race is great, but I think sometimes you gotta come down and have a good time. <laughs> you can't make this up. There's 50,000 people here. Right here on Duval Street, you know, you gotta get around in style. They get to see a lot of multi million dollar boats. They see you get to see three days of great racing from Lamborghinis and stuff like that. So, you know, it's a little bit of a show. Uh, showstopper, you know what I mean? Come Key West, everybody's ready to go, and you gotta have your game on. You, gotta, you know, everything happens real fast down here in these three races. You wanna finish on a good note, try and win this world championship. Yeah, there's a place for your game face and a place for fun here in this place. Key West, what a special week this is. The finals, the World Championships, Superboat International. We're up to our next class now. Superboat Extreme and Micah, just a continuation of seems like a multi-year battle between Cooper Standard and AMH Construction Instigator One. Two identical boats, identical power, identical drives. No wonder it's been a battle like this all year long for many, many seasons. Just been great racing as we're going racing again one more time. Superboat Extreme, green flag drops. AMH Construction Instigator out to the early lead, very slight early lead. Tommy over Cooper Standard, but this is the battle we wanted to see all week, and unfortunately, it just didn't go this way. Cooper Standard had day one, uh, AMH Construction Instigator had day two, but this is shaped up to be like last year. Look how close they're getting. Yeah, they're going to keep this one tight this time around the third boat in this race here. The Freedom 12 boat, some changes for them as well. Jason Ventura sitting in at the wheel. And unfortunately, number 43, the Outer Limits did not start again fighting those mechanical gremlins that they have, but Cooper Standard has pulled out from AMH Construction Instigator. This is interesting, not what I was expecting to see as they head into turn number one, known as the wall. Cooper Standard takes it pretty tight, maybe pushes them out a little bit, but AMH Construction Instigator, wow, really wide Really there. wide, wow. Not sure exactly what they were thinking, why they went out so wide, uh, but it was a little bit rougher. You could see that water shoot up behind. That's the props leaving the water every time that happens. And then the deck, they're spinning off ballast probably, you know, trying to lighten up or add ballast either way. But again, just trying to get that boat to run as level as they can. They do have ballast tanks where they can fill them with water off of the engines and then they can drain them. Uh, they're usually located in the front of the boat or on the sides to get the boat to balance just a little bit better. And sometimes with Cooper Standard to pass, you can, you can see him dump the water out uh, when he gets on the straightaway. where he wants the boat to be lighter uh, going into the harbor turn, but I do not see them dumping water at this moment but they continue to lead in Superboat Extreme, so they're doing something right. As you say, this is a pure spec race. The specs are exactly the same between the two boats. You think, well, it just comes down to operator skill and execution, but there are a lot of differences in setup, other things that can make a difference in a race, right? Totally different setup, uh, and, and they're different crews, right? I mean, you know, Billy Glick and Brett Hirschman and Cooper Standard, uh, two guys that have been racing for an incredibly long time together in this exact boat. 
Uh, and then you get back to AMH Construction Instigator. Uh, Peter Meyer and Johnny Stanch raced for a long time together. And Anthony Smith has filled in on occasion. Not his first time in this boat. Not, not his first time, but they definitely don't have the experience together that Billy Glick and Brett Freshman have in Cooper Standard. So, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. We saw it wasn't a problem on day two for AMH Construction Instigator. I just think right now Cooper Standard may be on, on their setup a little bit longer, but remember, a longer race, same thing can happen here. They could lose their setup. AMH Construction Instigator could come to it a little bit more. Well, for now, Cooper Standard with the upper hand still in the early going, though anything can change. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. The Superbug Key West World Championship presented by Steel is brought to you by Wake FX, AMH Construction, Geico, and by Steel, built in America, believing in America. Final race, World Championship race in the Superboat Extreme category, and you saw right there, Cooper Standard with a substantial lead over yesterday's champion, AMH Construction Instigator, Cooper Standard as the lead in points coming into this one as well. So if they can hang on to that, they are your world champions. And Tommy, they're trying to look to the inside of Cooper Standard, right? They're trying to make a move, but this is a precarious position to be in, but they didn't do what I thought they would have to do, which is drive outside of the wake of Cooper Standard. We heard the comment marbles earlier. Marbles yep, yep. means air bubbles, right? And air bubbles can disrupt the bottom of the boat. They can disrupt the steering of the boat. They can disrupt the traction of the boat, basically. So that's what you want to try and stay out of. And it was very impressive that Johnny Stanch could hold that line through that corner because it was tight in there. Always looking for clean water. I guess that's the, the bottom line for Cooper Standard. has got nothing but clean water and have had that for the entirety of this race so far. And we are about to run out of laps. But Cooper Standard is losing ground quickly to AMH Construction Instigator. And you can see it's pretty rough on this outside leg going into turn number one. These boats are getting some pretty good air out here and chine walking a little bit more than most we've actually seen. But look at the inside move here. They've put that nose in there and that can have an effect on them too, right? And it looks like it's worked in favor of AMH Construction Instigator. They were able to pass Cooper Standard on the inside. Let's see if they can make the pass stick into turn number two. Cooper Standard way on the outside of AMH Construction Instigator as they head back down this long straightaway, that gentle bend back into the harbor turn, the 180 degree turn number three. But wow, look at AMH Construction Instigator run. Anthony Smith doing a phenomenal job. Johnny Stanch, just what an impressive run. Absolutely, they have found something in the latter stages of this race right here. Of course, they came in first on day number two, started out with a disappointing third place, but they are right back on pace where they were in race number two. Again, that personnel change has paid off well. This is just a great race site to just watch a race from. You can see the entire course. You can see all of the action. You get the spray, the smell. Just a great race site. That's why they draw huge numbers to this place every year and have done so for 36 years of this incredible event. And look at that perfect turn by AMH Construction Instigator. That was an awesome shot. They just arced that boat around that corner nicely. They just let the boat track nice around the corner. Anthony got back on the throttles. That was a textbook turn in offshore power racing for v bottom. Remember, these are mono hauls not cat hauls, everything changes. Absolutely, and we're in the final lap now, an AMH instigator trying to hang on to this one. They make themselves back-to-back -back world champions here. Getting out of that chine walk pretty quickly. Chine walk is when the boat hops side to side. It's actually bouncing from the lifting strikes on the bottom of a hull. And it takes a little bit to drive through that. You can use the trim tabs, which is the black plate. You can see there, those are known as trim tabs. Those are like wheelie bars on a boat, right? Basically, they're to prevent the bow from coming up too high, but also preventing the boat from going too far side to side. Bow too high or side to side is slow, and you're going to lose speed. I think Cooper Standard might be slowing a little bit. They may be losing speed, sure. They still look good. The boat looks awesome. Uh, maybe they just don't have the setup they need to catch AMH Construction Instigator. So. Uh, at this point, uh, barring something happening to this team, this should be their world championship to lose. Turning point in this race happening about three laps from the end there, and AMH Instigator surprising everyone, easily taking over Cooper Standard on their way. This is US 1. They won the regular season as well, just as they did last year. Looking to make it a double again this year. And it's getting rough out there, Tom. We saw a couple of big hops there coming out of turn number two, so the conditions are getting uh, a little bit more adverse here. Remember, it was kind of flat the past couple days. Now it's starting to bump up. 
nowhere near what it was last year in Key West. So last year was uh, amazing on that last day. So amazing, in fact, we had to cut the lap short for the final race of the year. Well, that's going to wrap it up, put a period on this season for AMH Construction Instigator, another back-to-back -back US one and a world championship in the same season. Congratulations to John Stanch, Anthony Smith, of course, Peter Meyer, he was part of this effort as well, was fully in the seat during race number one. Just an outstanding team that always finds a way to win. That's a great performance. It's awesome to see Anthony Smith be able to come in halfway through, not a lot of test time, not a lot of practice time, and come in and run that boat the way that he did. Now this is the day for AMH Construction Instigator, this incredible team, and hey, getting ready, getting the celebration underway. Peter Meyer, of course, leading the way. Hey, what a great day. My driver and throttleman for today, the they did a great job. What it's all about is my crew, Kenny, John, Wayno, but everybody else here is, you know, it's a team effort. I mean, I got a volunteer team, and for a bunch of volunteers, I got a lot of them, and uh, I want to thank them all. Yes, All right, all your efforts throughout the year directed at this day, at this result, a world championship. Congratulations again to AMH Construction. Instigator won winners in Superboat Extreme. We're crowning a whole bunch of winners today, Mike. Let's talk about some of these other classes. There are four other classes to talk about here, and these are also world champions, although not covered in the show. These teams deserve it just as much as anybody else does. In Superboat V, it was LSB, Hurricane of Awesomeness slash RevX Oil. In Superboat stock, it was FJ Propeller. Production three, Second Amendment took the world championship there in Crazy Chicken in production four. Congratulations all, one more world championship to decide when we come back, the Superboat class, the marquee class. Tee it up when we return. Key West World Championships for Superboat International, and this is it, the ultimate day, the third day of racing as we get ready for the marquee class. The Superboat class here, this third day so very important. It is the decider. Double points as we take a look at the Steel team here. Such a great comeback story. A tough, tough restart for this team after a very difficult period. I don't know, it's different now. The first Coco there was a lot of emotions, first race. I got a little more feeling for everything. I got a little more understanding of the boat. I'm more comfortable with Grant. We communicate better. Things have changed now, so. But there's so many similarities with this young guy right here. Now my job is to teach Jake all the ropes of, of racing a boat. You know, we knew Jake was nervous and uh, big shoes to fill following JR. Uh, it was my first time taking the new steel boat out onto uh, an actual race course. Really exciting day. It was emotional. It was a lot. I was racing in the outboard class. That's the same class my dad started in. And I always knew that I wanted to get into racing, and he knew that too. Side by side. Yeah. Look at this. That is neck and neck right there. <laughs> driving wise, the kids come a long way. You can't just jump in one of these things and drive one of these like you're getting in a car. This ain't a car. <laughs> We're just putting Jake on an accelerated learning. You know, every time we go out and run the boat together, it's just a, a constant com communication between the two of us. That's who taught my dad how to race. That's who he learned with. And then for me now to go down the same path, um, to have Grant as my teacher, I get to hear all the stories my dad would tell me. Now I get to see firsthand in the boat. You want to buzz up here? Buzz up here. Senior and Mike are sitting on the end of it. It was very emotional when he came and buzzed the uh, pier, because that's what JR always did, as close as he could get, and take out all the people on the pier. So, yeah, it was, it was very emotional when Jake did that. And I could see his little hand waving in the window, and uh, that definitely got my dad and uh, myself, for sure. Yeah, it was exciting. Don't be surprised if you don't see us running up front in a few races. I think uh, Grant is patient with him and wants to teach him and doesn't want to make any, you know, doesn't want to put him in a situation he's not ready for. But down here in Key West, 
I think he's ready for everything. We got a third place. Just for us finishing this race is all that I could ask for today. Get a dad to be proud. Yep. I think Key West, you're going to see a different duo here in that orange boat. What a story and all kinds of honest concerns and apprehensions about the first go around at Key West here. I think uh, Jake has acquitted himself quite well here, Mike. And when you have a guy like Grant in the boat with him, you couldn't have picked anybody better to teach Jake how to do it, especially since Grant was the one that taught JR. Well, certainly the results speak for themselves this week here in Key West, a fourth place in race one, third place in race number two. They're definitely in this thing points wise possibility of a world championship. They got to deal with these guys though. Performance Boat Center with a first and a fourth. WH in Motorsports, a second and a first, leading the way in points as we get closer and closer to the start, Mike. Tommy, we are getting ready for a start. That's the yellow flag. That means the boats are going to line up and boom, we've got a green flag. We are going racing Key West style one more time in the super boat class. Rooster tails come up. Throttles go down and we are going racing. Look at this start, Tommy. WHM, Cleveland Construction, Sailor Jerry, Auto Nation, Performance Boat Center. This is what we want to see all week long. Fantastic start. And look at Cleveland Construction moving out in front. It kind of puts you in the mind of last year's third race. Exactly. And those were really treacherous conditions. I do think it's a little bit rougher out there today. It's, I think turn one is going to be a little bit harder for these guys to navigate. But this is a lot going on. Tommy, how many times have we seen that shot? Boats pinching other boats. T customary, not where they want to be right now. Absolutely. Getting closer and closer to turn number one. 13 laps we're going today, so a lot can happen in the next 20 minutes or so. What a great start for Sailor Jerry Auto Nation. Also, this team has struggled all week long with their setup and mechanical issues, but they are out in second place right now. Performance Boat Center and Steel chasing them down for second place. Big hop there oh, no. by Cleveland whoa. Construction. Whoa, whoa, oh, that's, oh, that's, no. Oh. Everybody had to pull back. That, this is a chain reaction deal here. Yeah, that, whoa, that's a boat upside down. There, yeah, the New Zealand one boat right there. WHM just barely escaping through that one right there, but let's look back to these guys right here, see what happens with them. They're in a distressed situation right now for sure. Well, WHM actually drove over NZ1 Pro Floors. They had nowhere to go. Once that boat went upside down, it actually turned sideways and went in the path of WHM. Billy and Jay, very lucky to get away from that one, but we hope that Chris and Wayne are okay in NZ1 Pro Floors. We will wait for them to come out. We do have scuba divers rather in the water waiting to see the outcome of this, but this shows the excellent response for the medical teams of Super Boat International. These boats were on scene within 30 seconds, and I do see Chris or maybe Wayne there coming someone out. Someone was coming out of there. That's a good sign right there. So happy to see another look at this classic chain reaction. Look at that, and it all winds up with that result right there. Yeah, everybody backed up when Cleveland Construction stuffed down into that wave. It caused everybody to lift out of it. When you lift these boats, they kind of lose suction to the water a little bit and will spin out. What NZ1 Pro Floors did is they actually tripped over a wave. The boat kind of got a little sideways, and then it caught, and it was called high-sided. It high-sided over top of itself, and you saw the boat turn in front of WHM, and when that happened, WHM had nowhere to go. Again, Billy and Jay are really lucky to get away. Hopefully, they'll be able to finish the race, but uh, our thoughts right now are with the NZ1 Pro Floor guys. Of course, we want to make sure they're okay, but again, you see the response. Now, you see orange smoke in the helicopter, Tommy. What that's going to do is tell the rest of these teams to clear wide, right? Slow down. This is a caution like to have but this is this is the caution situation. You go as wide as you possibly can. Okay, we will continue this race. So much more to see, so much more to look at again when we come back. The first lap of the final race in the Super Bowl class has not begun well. Very first lap ended in this result, upended the NZ1 Pro Floors racing boat. A very violent episode right there involving a lot of boats in a classic chain reaction, but these guys got the worst of it. I want you to take a look at what Wayne Vlader and Chris Hanley inside that boat saw for themselves.
extremely frightening right there. What do you see there, Mike? What do you, what, what, how can you get to the bottom of this one? Well, as they were going to the corner again, we talked about the chain reaction, right? As they were going into the corner, they actually lost sight of the boo because of all the rooster tails, and, and we couldn't see what they saw at any point. When they came out of the rooster tails, they were actually a little to the inside to the entrance buoys to turn one. So they had to correct and come back out. When they came back out, they tried to turn again. There were a couple of waves right there that I saw. They hit one of them, it went up, it hit the next one, and that's what caused the boat to catch and high side. High side means it rolled up to the higher side of the boat and it flipped over. And again, that's what caused WHM to hit them because WHM had nowhere to go. Wow, look at that shot of WHM. Billy and Jay are so very lucky. And look at that boat flex right there. See that boat just take that abuse of when it hit the water. These boats are amazing machines. Carbon fiber, Kevlar, they're so strong. But to see that boat flex like that, that boat will be going back to skater. Look at this onboard footage here. Very violent, what they must have been thinking at that moment. Well, that's Jay Mahler. He's the throttle man on the right side of your screen. And if you watch in the slow-mo here, they hit the boat. And that's the water, Tommy. That's the water showing how high that boat was. That's behind them. That's looking backward. They are so very lucky. And look at Billy Moss' face. Billy doesn't know what to think. They've got to compose themselves, no, Tommy, because they're in still in the race. They're the race in continues. For a world championship, right? And Absolutely. the race isn't going to stop. This is what you see in a caution area with offshore power racing. You got the helicopter, so the team see the helicopter right there to the upper right hand side of the screen. They know to slow going through the area, give them plenty of room, uh, go out wide around the wreck. While wow, this response team does a fantastic job of getting this boat. First, they'll flip the boat over, get it upright, then they will get it back to the crane area. And uh, I do believe they have some cameras on board. We might get some really good footage later, but as we go on board with WHM, it looks like Billy and Jay have gotten their act together. But this is beneficial for Steel. Remember, they had to have some bad fortune for their good Absolutely. misfortune. Absolutely, they for had their to good have fortune some compliance from the other teams, yes. Exactly, and now they're in a battle with WHM, who was a favorite for this world championship. But Cleveland Construction, continues to lead. Keith and Ed are doing a fantastic job. That's WHM though, Tommy. Look at that. WHM came back from that, and you know there is damage done to that boat somewhere. That boat is not 100% right now, but this is what we want to see shape up. U.S. Performance Boat Center, Jimmy Johns, and WHM out front, but Cleveland Construction Steel could play some spoilers in their world championships. Performance Boat Center, definitely one of the contenders for the world championship here. Great position to start this race and a great position right now. Holding off steel, holding off WHM for the time being as we approach turn number three. This is a fantastic race. Maybe about 10, maybe now five feet, two feet, three feet separating Cleveland Construction and Performance Boat Center Jimmy Johns. I wonder if they'll take this corner a little bit wider, maybe push him out and scrub off some speed. No, Keith and Ed went right to the pin. Look at that almost side by side around the whole corner. They turned a little bit tighter there, and when they did that, they accelerated. Look, they pulled out just a little bit from Performance Boat Center, but now Performance Boat Center may be a little bit taller on the setup, now has more speed on the straightaways. Tommy, what can happen here now is, right, Cleveland Construction and Performance Boat Center have a great race going on, but they're racing each other. And when you race each other, it tends to slow you down just a little bit because you're worried about that other boat. That will let WHM and Steel catch up and this could be a four-way battle and could be a three-way battle for a world championship because three out of these four boats are in contention for a world championship. The top points in those three boats right there, definitely it's going to be a three-way battle. It's going to have to be at some point during this unless someone drops out. And of course, attrition is something that's always in the back of your mind. You've got to have the endurance uh, to push it to the limit without breaking it. Today they can swing for the fences and so they are a whale of a race going on. We'll be right back. The Superboat Key West World Championship presented by Steel is brought to you by Geico, Wake FX, and by Steel and the 36 volt Steel Lightning Battery System. What can you do on a single charge? Hey, when I cut the pump off, throw the green hose inside the boat. Not yet, not yet, hold up. Get ready. Frightening incident to start this race off in the first lap. The NZ1 boat going over. They've got it now back in the pits area. And what are they doing now? They're trying to get some way to, 
to free this boat up. Well, they're trying to open the engine hatch, right? And what happens is, is when the boat flips over, it's just like your car. It disjoints things and articulates the hull in a way it was never supposed to be articulated. So they can't get that hatch open to get a water pump down in there. They're using a gas-powered engine. You can hear it running in the background to pump the water out of that boat. Once again, Tommy, they were just a little bit too far inside that buoy. They tried to overcorrect. They hit a couple of odd waves, and then they went over. But let's go on board and see what it was like for Chris and Wayne. Water pouring in, no panic. Both guys know the protocol, did what they had to do. You notice the time right there from the moment they were inverted in the water to the time that they are out through that hatch, 45 seconds. That is remarkable. Well, and Tommy, think about the physical condition you have to be in. You're up one position, right? You're racing the boat, you're holding onto a steering wheel, the boat flips over, you are now upside down. You release yourself from the harness, you fall down on now what's the bottom of the boat, which should be the top of the boat, and you have to navigate two people trying to get out of the boat. And Tommy, they're trying to get out of a space smaller than your attic door. Two people trying not to drown, trying to breathe, keeping each other calm, a fantastic job. The safety is amazing training is amazing, and that's what kept those guys safe. But meanwhile, the battle is still on, and look, Tommy, it's getting rougher out there. Performance Boat Center for the moment looks like they got a shot at going around Cleveland Construction. That's what they've been battling it out with for the last three laps. And now, Tommy, the battle is on for second, right between Cleveland Construction and this boat, number 13 steel. Jake and Grant have done a great job at being consistent this entire time, all three races just been there where they needed to, and they're doing a fantastic job, and I think they're catching Cleveland Construction. We might see a pass for second place. Yeah, Steele in a perfect position to start this day, third place in overall points with a fourth and the third in the first two races here. And these boats have to meet weight when they come out. This is spec class racing, so it's a really fine line, right, of burning off too much fuel, not having enough fuel, possibly running out of fuel. There's all these factors, but uh, this is a great drag race right here between Steele and Cleveland Construction. And Steele definitely has the upper hand. They've gotten an overtake by just about a half a rooster tail length. A rooster tail is that shot of water that comes up off the back of the boat there when the prop just aerates a little too much. But what a great race right here. And I think Jake's got to be feeling really good inside of Steele. He's got to be knowing that he's doing his father proud. He's getting it done down here in Key West. And, you know, if they can finish today, uh, obviously finishing in Key West is a victory within itself. Finishing up lap number 12 right now for our top four boats. We head into the gun lap, the final lap here. Performance Boat Center on top, trying to hang on to that lead. As we say, they're in a total protection mode right now and a great race for second place. Look how Jake took that corner. That corner was absolutely perfect. He allowed Grant to maintain the speed. They didn't have to scrub off any speed. And look what happened to the gap between Steel and Cleveland Construction. That speed through that corner makes all the difference in the entire world because, again, these boats don't have superchargers or prochargers, so they don't have that instant snap of acceleration. It takes a little while for these RPMs to come up, uh, a lot of trimming of the drive, freeing up with the propellers, aerating the propellers, and getting the RPMs to come up. But my hat's off to this team. They've done a fantastic job this week here at Key West, Florida, especially for Jake's first time. Jake and Grant looking very much at home with the situation right now. They know they've achieved, as you say, they've achieved a victory, that's for sure, on this day. But it looks like the day is going to belong to Performance Boat Center. And Tommy, as they come out of turn number two, they're looking at a few things here now, right? They're looking at the checkered flag, they're looking at the finish line, and they're looking at their 2016 World Championship here in Key West, Florida. Myra Coyle, Johnny Thompson, hats off as they take the checkered flag, and they are your Superboat World Champion. And there you have it, a World Championship has been crowned here. The Performance Boat Center, by winning this race, collects the 500 double points on this day. Steal a strong second place in WHM, a disappointing third place. There are your final total points right there. Hats off to Performance Boat Center, US 1. They did it during the regular season. They did it at Key West. 
what a day. And Mike, I'm going to let you do it. Why don't you pick the steel power move of the day? Well, hats down, the steel power move has to go to the number 13 steel boat. Jig and Grant did a fantastic job taken to the inside right out of turn number two for a pass for second place on Cleveland Construction. And what that tells me is, is that's confidence going into the 2017 Superboat International Series. A great way to end the year and a great way to look forward to next year. Well, as we say, the, the celebration just beginning for Performance Boat Center should be in full swing by now. When you get out front and you can get that clean water, especially going into turn three, it is the biggest advantage. It was the first time all weekend that we got to go into turn three in the lead to where we could actually turn a corner like we normally can. So that was the greatest feeling because before it's going through marbles and through wakes and all this stuff, it was, it was crazy. But anyway, Performance Boat Center, Jimmy Johns, world champions. Myrick Coyle, full celebration mode. Certainly they earned it. Congratulations to this team, US1 and the world champions. Hey, congratulations to all the teams we've watched today. Performance Boat Center, Wake Effects in the Unlimited Class, Super Boat Extreme Class, World Champions, AMH Construction Instigator, and all the other classes here at Key West at the World Championships. Mike, thank you so much. Thank you at home for being with us today. It's been another great year in Key West, another champion crown, and we'll see you again next year.